talk to me while I'm listening now. All this love has a voice that we both can hear. Before you let it go. About 12 years ago, I got a toothache that was unbearable. It was three days until the next available dentist appointment, so I spent that three days living heart and soul inside my tooth, enjoying the agony. During that three days, oddly enough, my hearing degraded to the point that all I could hear was an unceasing dull roar. There must be nerves going from the lower jaw to the middle ear in us humans, and presumably the other mammals. The mammalian ear looks to me like God's built it. They look designed. That design is not optimum, so those gods were somewhat incompetent, or perhaps they were merely drunk when they designed the mammalian ear. But all in all, it is a fairly good design. Of course, several fossils have been found that show how the mammalian ear evolved from reptiles and from jawless fish to reptiles. If the gods did the designing, they used evolution and 550 million years to do it. Sounds like a government paid union job to me. Good pay and plenty of leisure to get the job done. The mammalian middle ear's major parts are the eardrum, the malus, the incus, and the stapes. Though generally the eardrum itself is not considered part of the middle ear. One reptilian jawbone, called the articular, evolved into the mammalian middle ear bone, the malus. Another reptilian jawbone, called the quadrate, evolved into the mammalian middle ear bone, the incus. The one and only reptilian auditory ossicle eventually evolved into the mammalian middle ear bone, the stapes, after a few intermediate steps which formed the columella in later reptiles. While I'm at it, I will mention the eustachian tube, which connects at the back of one's throat and enters the middle ear cavity behind the eardrum. You will notice that when you gain altitude by driving an automobile quickly up a mountain, that the air pressure outside, here shown to the left of the eardrum, decreases and the air pressure inside the eustachian tube lags behind. This causes your ears to feel like they are clogged and yawning will hopefully make your ears pop and restore pressure equilibrium. If you dive into water, water pressure on the left side of the eardrum pushes the eardrum inward. The pressure can get painful if the eustachian tube pressure is not increased by forcing air into it. Eardrums can rupture. The stapes is shaped like a stirrup, which allows mammals to estimate the direction of sound. Turning one's ears helps narrow down the direction. This is an excellent example of a superior hearing mechanism that evolved from a hearing mechanism in reptiles that was not quite as good. Thus, several reptilian jawbones, the quadrate, articular, and angular, were extensively reduced and modified gradually to form the modern mammalian middle ear. This is a fact and one can see the process in the fossil record. To briefly summarize, up there in your head, and mine presumably, there are two ancient reptile jaw joints, the incutomalolar. Two reptile jaw bones, the malus, two reptile bones that used to anchor the jaw to the skull, the stapes. Two reptilian fibrous joint remnants, which make up most of the eardrums, and assorted reptile vesticles you may not have known were up there. <laughs> Hello? Kind of bugs me that there's reptile parts up there, but since part of my brain is also part of a reptile brain, I guess I can't really complain. Now, why the gods chose to modify reptilian jawbones to make mammalian ears well, that's a mystery perhaps some creationists can explain.